My belief is not to give him much, no time. It's just say, you come back to me. You want to get back in the ring. You show me that you can get yourself ready for the next seven weeks. And then that shows me how much you want to do it. And he says, yeah, I will. I said, OK, then. Because you're only fighting four rounds and you box more or less all most of your life. So you should be able to get back in the saddle fairly quick. So it was OK, then. Put a lot of issues aside, what he's had to go through, struggling in the mid. Um, you know, he's been out of the ring for a long time, probably lost a lot of fan base. Um, I just thought the people of Oldham would get back behind him because a lot of the stuff that's happened is not down to his fault, where more than that, if a kid could packs in boxing for me, I won't really bring him back because I don't see the point, because boxing is a hard struggle as it is. But then when I listen to him, the other thing is, if I don't listen to him, then they won't bring it to you and they will never have an understanding. So I've also got to be able to be a good listener and trust in what they're saying and give that second chance if it's worth giving that second chance. And that's what we've done here now with Labour. Um, Cause it's a shame to see such a talent go to waste. Um, it's got like a Cuban style boxing and he's very unique with himself. Um, and I think just keeping him as busy as what we did with all the other lads. And especially for this year, if I can get him out five times this year, he would have done well. Is, is the last time we fought on the Black Flash show was July last year. Um, obviously, you see him in the ring now. How do you think it looks uh, in terms of the pace? And, you know, yeah, well, you know what? It, it's, it's early, very, very early days. He's just come back in uh, first training today, first training session with us today. Uh, we spoke a lot on the phone the other day. Um, I understand where he's coming from. As long as I just talk now, is his, his, his mind's a lot clearer than what it was before and he can just concentrate fully on his boxing, uh, build him back up, um, get his supporters back interested in him. Um, and hope that you know this can reach him, that let him know that what Dabo was going through was a lot. And uh, you know, we don't need to make excuses up, but you know, I don't give second chances. I don't feel I have to because when a boxer walks away from the sport, it means the heart's not in it. But when a boxer walks away from the sport because he wants to do it and every day of his life is punishing him. You know, this is where they start getting depressed because they think they can't talk to you and they don't know how to talk to you. A lot of people, a lot of fighters find me unapproachable to think that I'm not that guy that they can have a chat, sit down and chat to. Um, so it took that a lot of courage to actually pick it up and, you know, because it's the second time he's done this, uh, to come back and with the reasons that he's given me, it's, it's, it's validated. So. I just want to work on this fan base and build him back up and letting people see that this kid can fight. Nice. Um, Dabba, it's nice having you back on the Black Flash. <coughs> uh, without going into too much detail, can you just give us a few bit of insight of uh, why the lay off um, since your fight in July? Yeah, like basically just kicked back in my career and then I, I boxed on the Black Flash show in July, picked up a, a slight, slight injury. And then I was coming to training, etc. Still, still attend, attending training, but you know, as you know, if you're not fighting, you're not making no no living, no nothing. So like, you're dealing with all, all outside problems from outside the gym, dealing dealing with many things outside the gym, to be honest. But but still trying to hold it together, still pursue my career, which I want. Because like like Pat said, a lot of people choose to um, leave boxing just because they don't want to do it no more. That was not my reason, really dealing with injuries, dealing with personal issues, family issues, back, back at home, etc. But mainly like them things now are really all behind me now. And we have some looking more more towards the future, just to push on, move further on my career. Like like I said, I'm 2 and 0 now. And like, like Pat just said, I'm looking to get out this year five times, just to really give it a big push this year, to make some statement, make some noise, to get my name out there, like, and to prove everything Pat's always said about me, like how talented I am, how this, what a lot of people around me say. So, but it's, now it's more a like, more thing to go and show that. So it's not just words. More put more put, put more action to the words. What what keeps um, bringing you back? Because I know a few times that you've gone and come back. What, what keeps bringing you back to boxing? Cause what keeps me bringing back to boxing? This is the only thing I pretty much ever know. I've been coming to this gym since I was fourteen years old, 20, 24 now and twenty five now. It's, nearly like 11 years like I've been chasing this boxing dream so like it's something very hard for me just to just to to let go or to throw away but as you grow older it's not as 
when you're an amateur, it was a lot easier. Tell me, pick you up, take you to fights, everything was done for you and everything. But as you grow older, I've got my young daughter, I've got this and that going on now. Life, life, that's life for you. By the time you're like 25, you've got things to actually handle in your personal life, bills, everything. so you can't. But in, at the same time, though, this is something you want to do, so you're going to obviously trying to find a way how to make it work. That's what um, it must mean a lot for someone like you know, Pat to believe in you. So like I said, he doesn't give uh, second chances. I've been in this gym a lot of times to see people go. go. Um, it must mean a lot to you to have you know, someone like Pat giving you a second chance or to keep believing in you. Of course, yeah. And that's what keeps... Because I, I believe in myself a lot, but knowing someone like Pat who's been around boxing for how long, to say, like, you know what, this kid can be good. He's always said that this kid can be good, this kid can be good. He won't lie. He's not the type of guy to lie. So that's what I've always knew. <coughs> like, if someone like Pat can believe in me and say, I must be I must be, be, be good, so it's time for me to act till this year to prove Pat's words right. I mean, no, I'll tell you a story. When Dabba first walked into the gym, I mean, he walked in and uh, I think it was me and uh, Paul at the time was working at the gym with us. And this little skinny black kid walked in and says, you know, he looked, walked in. It looked like we, we, we was about to feed him. <laughs> <laughs> no, but he walked in, right? And he was so skinny. And, you know, it's funny because when he said I want a box, Paul just said straight away, oh, no. <laughs> he said, no. That's <laughs> like... And as he turned back round and started walking out the door, I said, hey, come here a minute. I thought, you know what? I had a flashback the first time I walked into this gym. I was a very skinny kid, yeah. And I remember saying to Brian, I want to have big muscles. And he goes, why do you need big muscles? I said, because I want to start knocking people out. And he goes, OK, then. He says, meet me here tomorrow. So he took me to his house. Anyway, he sat me down and he was watching Mark Breland. Oh, fucking hell, little skinny dude knocking people out. Thomasons, Sugar Ray Robinson, you know, all the, all the, all the old time fighters. And I'm thinking, first thing I said, I want to start doing that. And that's when Brian started teaching me. So it's kind of like looking at these skinny kids, don't underestimate him. <clears throat> was, was, so I said, no, come back then. I said, start tomorrow or whatever. And he started. And he happened to be very good. You know, it, it, was, it was weird. It's like a sticking set but so fast and so good with his hands. And he just went on and I remember I've been, um, I think it was you. You know what was it? Will. Eh? Will. Yeah, and all in the championship. So he, he, he did okay and he did okay. He did everything behind that left chap. So he's won these, what's like a, a Linden. He's got a beautiful left chap. Lovely style of box. Yeah, and I think the more he can grow into his, his own confidence and his own belief and believe in himself, his, his inner ability as much as I believe in him. You know, I, I want him to see what I believe in. This is why he gets his second chance. Yeah, because I think he's something that can be out of this world in this weight division. But I've got to move him quick because he, he, all he's stopping the time. So I put him on the first show in February. And my big message is to, is to everybody in Oldham and all his, his friends and, and his people that was backing him before is don't stop backing him because I've not stopped backing him. So I would like them to stay, keep following him because this kid yeah, is going to be the pride of Oldham. Yeah, he's going to shock everyone. He's going to be the next one that's a diamond in the dirt. So I mean, and, and then he just needs polishing up. And by the time I polish this kid up, I'm going to be, I can't see people were talking about him. Final question to you, Dabo. Um, it's the start of the year 2024. What would you like um, the, the, the year to look like for you? Um, what are your expectations for yourself? My expectations, like, first of all, starting February 17th, getting out there, getting the win. And just, this year for me is all about consistency. That's what, that, this is what's the main thing for me. What I said, as soon as I started first day, January the 1st today, this year, 2024, for me, is really about just consistency. There's nothing else, like, just consistency, because it, that's the only thing probably I've probably lacked so far in my boxing career various things going on here and there, this and that. I've not had that run of consistency. So that's the only thing really I'm looking forward to this year.